looking for the best boss talk. We ain't worried about the rest. Boss talk. Tell me who's hot, who's not, who really on top, who got they on shop, the hustle don't stop, nope. same old shit, shit. grinding, you know ain't nothing changed one bit, it's a unique hustle, we done came up, bitch, yeah. name another podcast, high like this, cause E, check it, check it, check it, it's a unique hustle, it's your boy, ECO, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing, official, Miss Jamaica, what's going on? Nothing, nothing, you know, my dad walk on, I want y'all to stop what you're doing right now, go like, subscribe, follow us on all social media platforms, I want to mean all, I mean all, I mean our Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Snapchat, you name it, we're on it, just Google us, Boss Talk Podcast, one one we pop up everywhere guarantee you but if you want to see all our visuals you go over to our youtube channel there you'll see all our visuals and don't forget to hit subscribe but y'all always see us on the street and be like man i love what y'all doing keep it up this is how we can keep it up under each and every video including this one right here in the description section there's a link that says join our membership go ahead and click that link and follow all the instructions that's how you can support the brand so we can keep giving you all this dope content every single day Thank you in advance. Man, check it, man. Hey, man, we got some guys in here today, y'all. West Coast stand up. Hey, man, these guys don't need no introduction, man. These guys, man, these, these boys go way, way back, man. These boys really, really been in the game, man. Man, <laughs> check it, man. Light the shade of brown, ODM, money, moons in the building. Hey, That's what's right. cracking, man? Thanks for having what's us, What's up, brother? man? No, thank y'all for coming on down, man. Miss Jamaica. Hello. Thank you. We just, we just tapped down. We just touched down, man. I hit my, the homie Lil Grifo hit us up. He was like, yo, man. You want to come slide through? I said, yes, we do. Boss Talk 101. <laughs> what yeah. a boss is talk, yes, man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Let's get it, man. Like you guys, man. Like I said, man. West Coast, man, is going down, man. We're going to do it like we do it on Boss Talk 101, man. Mr. Maker, let's let hit him with the uh, uh, uh. Okay, so I like to go into the history. He goes into the music. I'm, I like to know you as a person growing up. All right. So you were born and raised in what part of L.A.? I was actually in Orange County. In it was Orange like, County. yeah, about 60 miles from L.A. What's it called? It Orange ain't far. County. Yeah. It ain't oh, it's called Orange, okay, Orange I know, County, I, Santa Ana to be exact. Okay. As my, my younger youth. And then uh, I ended up moving towards, uh, in, in high school, towards the Inland Empire, which was another... 30 miles away from this, but on the area, Southern California. And you were raised with your mom and dad in the same household? Uh, single parent. Single parent, My your mom? mom? Yeah, yeah. Okay. an only child, too. An only child? Man, I had it all, man. So where was dad? This was, uh, dad was just, you know, being couldn't dead. leave it alone, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> he couldn't leave it alone, so. So was he influential in your life, though? I mean, nah, I mean, it was just frequent visits here or there, you know what okay. I'm saying? Um, but mom's kept me busy. She held down both roles. But so. how was it like growing up without a father? Because as a young boy, you know what I mean? Yeah. You need that father influence in your Absolutely. life. Absolutely. You know, I would I would tend to like, you know, I had an uncle that was seven, seven years older than me. He was more like my brother. Mm -hmm. He was influential on me. I had a grandfather. We lived with my grandparents. So my grandpa was like that father figure as well, if you will. Plus the homies in the neighborhood, their dads or their parents that were together. You know, I always kind of gravitated towards uh, but their dads. But did that fill the gap, though? Um, for the most some part, some people say it does, and some people say it don't. You know what, Mister Jamaica? Like, I didn't realize that until I got older. Because right. we always, you know, what I'm saying when we get old, that's when everything just starts making sense. You start putting stuff together. Right. So I didn't think about it as a kid. So I was good as a kid. Mm -hmm. I was active. I was all over the place. My mom kept me busy. So it, it wasn't like if, if a question or conversation came up, like, "Hey, you know, where's dad?" or you know. He basically did that on his own. Right. I learned on my own just by maybe there was a day he didn't show up or maybe there was a day he didn't want to bring me home. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And just because he was too, you know what I'm right. saying? So I learned as own and, and, and kids absorbed that shit. But well, as you're grown now, how do you see that it affected you? How did it affect you looking back? I, I know I, that he wasn't really there. I mean, there was just... You know, like I have my son now, and that's how it affects. Now I see it. You can see it. I, I, you know, I got my own eight-year-old now, and I'm like, you know, I get emotional when I think about it because every every boy, every daughter needs their dad. It needs both roles. You know what I'm exactly. saying? So what do we have then? If we ain't being raised by a man in the in the household, where do we go? We mm -hmm. tend to go to the streets, like I said. I go to the homies, whatever, whatever. But like it. I thank God every day that I wake up and I got my wife with me and we got our children and they have both parents. Right. To me, they are blessed. They, they don't even understand. Like, and, and my son, I'm like, so I'm giving you what I wish I had. Man, exactly. that's heavy too. You know I saying? know I, as, a, as a youngster, uh, you don't really understand. Like I was taken from house to house. Your mom and dad were married for 48 years. Yeah. But I was from house to house. My mom and dad got divorced at nine years old. So. 
I get it. You know what I'm saying? But even the fact of just having that oneness with your mom kept you from thinking about the fact that you didn't have and you had things that kind of filled those gaps with the uncle. Right. But, you know, when you from house to house, you know what's going on. Yeah. You seeing different people coming in and out of each house. Yeah. And you dealing with different step parents and all that. And it's just a big dysfunctional cake. You right. know what I'm saying? Right. <laughs> like you from house to house. You like you ain't my daddy. nigga. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And see, my mom, she never remarried. So I didn't have a stepdad See what that I'm came saying? in. Matter of fact, but she, she had, had boyfriends though. She had boyfriends, but she shielded me so I was right. her focus. Right. So that if anybody got out of pocket, bye. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. For what even got started. Mama, you know what I mean? Like right. he's first. Right. If you can't handle that, then that's it. Because I always say, because the way in which I would think that that would affect you, because you said you had uncle, you had grandfather, but having a male role model in your life where you can see how he treats a woman, mm. how he treats your mom. Right. Those are the things I, I I would think that you were missing because you didn't see that with your uncle, your grandfather and stuff right. like that. But that's major for a boy growing up to whenever he meets that special someone, mm -hmm. he knows how to treat her. Yeah. I, I Again, I mean, I know my mom could only teach me so much. But when it came to that, she did teach me respect. Mm -hmm. So it was like, we, it, that could have been handed down from a father or a mother. But, you know, it's like the way I see how, you know, uh, my, 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 my grandfather treated my grandmother. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, like I said, my mom did an excellent job of doing both roles. Right. Son, this is how, you know, because the way I respect my mom is the way I'm going to respect a female. Right. Or I should. Uh, mm -hmm. our, our girl I'm seeing, right? So that's how she taught me. So if I got a lot of lying or said something, you know, disrespectful, mom wasn't having it. So you learn within your household, bottom line, that's where everything starts. And I don't see it as a, as a, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, not a handicap, or just not having both parents. Right. Just, uh, you know, um, it, it, it's it's what they teach you. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? And, and thankfully, like I said, man, you know, I, I, I was I was busy. I was active. That's I had awesome. girlfriends. I had my first girlfriend like in eighth grade, man, seventh grade. <laughs> Shit, damn, me lost my virginity like in tenth grade. You yeah, really want to yeah, go there, yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah let's and, talk about it. But it was, you know, <laughs> what I'm saying, I was a little travieso. Yeah. I always in the south. You know what I mean? Yeah. But it, that. In the 80s, you know what I'm saying? Right. Like, yeah, the most you could get is burnt. You know, AIDS went out yet. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so how yeah, that? Eddie Murphy taught us that. <laughs> <laughs> Eddie Murphy was like, man, AIDS, that new AIDS shit come this, in, man. This yeah. boss talk, man. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, check it, man. So how did things fall for you? You, 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 you your mama and your dad or not? Yeah, yeah, my, my parents are still together. Yeah, they, oh, they hang good. out. They've been together for like 30 plus years. And yeah. you know, that's the minority, right? Because yeah. everybody sitting in that seat is usually exactly what he said. Dad yeah. wasn't there. I was raised by a single mom. Yeah. It's a few that's raised by both mother and father. Did you know how lucky you were as a kid? Shit. As a kid, no, but now that I'm older and, you know, I see the bigger picture, I do see that I'm very grateful to have mm -hmm. my parents still together because a lot of my homies, they only got one, one or the right. other, you know? Yeah. So I consider myself very blessed to, you know, have them both, you know? Yeah, ain't nothing else to talk about, really. No, shit. <laughs> <laughs> this got both wheels. I'm jealous. Yeah, yeah. We're moving on. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I'm single. <laughs> Uh, I have a younger sister and a younger brother who, he passed away seven wow, years listen. ago. So wow. it's just me and my sister. So right you now. were the first. I'm the oldest, yeah. So did you feel like a lot of things fell on your shoulder to raise your youngers? Uh, yeah, I'm the one that always had to watch them and take care of them. You know, just had to play that role. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I, I just feel like I have more responsibility than them. They got away with everything, you know. But you know, me, I fucking got the whooping, you know. Yeah, yeah, you gonna get that? See, that's, what, yeah. that's what the older brothers always say. Because I'm the baby girl, and they're yeah. like, "Oh, you the spoiled one." I'm like, "No, I was not." <clears throat> mm. But it just feel like because being a parent now, you realize that you were more. Um, overprotective with your first because you know it's yeah. your first you don't know with the second one you're like oh you can do that yeah yeah it doesn't bother you as much you know yeah. but with the first, don't they you say the middle child get it the worst though they say because they pay attention more to the baby and the oldest is yeah. already yeah. so the middle child just left doing their own thing like the middle I can child, see but that. i was a leader Okay. No, nah, I wasn't trying to hit it. No, man. okay. Nah, man, I, I jumped off, man, started doing my own thing. The older was lame. The younger was trying to figure it out. I was the man. You know uh. what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I yeah. worked that out. I had to. Yeah, seeing, yeah. seeing both siblings. Yeah, seeing both, but then I wasn't impressed. You right, know what I'm saying? Right. It was all about your boy. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? for sure. <laughs> <laughs> you were Leo no. by chance. Yeah, I am. You're a great man. It's your birthday, man. 
boss talk. <laughs> Come on, man. You July, yeah. August. I'm August, man. Man, that's hard. Yes, sir. August is Leo, too, I'm on the, I'm on August the cusp. August, August 22nd. Man. Yeah, August yeah. 22nd. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And right what are there. you? I'm a Pisces. He don't You're do Pisces. nothing. Yeah. He just sticks out like a sore <laughs> throat. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, man. Hey, so you're both Leo? Yeah. 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 So y'all might be doing uh, this. Yeah, no, 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 not no. really. We did early on. We did early on. But after after five years of the marriage, you learn to deal with it. That's right. Yeah, you used to just ride with whatever. Me and Ryan, whatever in these relationships. How long have you been married? 20, 20 years. 20, oh, that's, 20, right, 20 that's, years. Right, that's right, that's right. So it's up, Ooh. man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's up Damn. and it's stuck. You know what I'm saying? That's right, it's up and it's stuck. <laughs> <laughs> so I just, I, I want to get on into it a little bit, man. Like, I want to talk about the group, man. Like, say to Brown, like, how sure. did you guys put that group together, like, when y'all first started? Let, let, let's go there. How did y'all meet? No, no, so, no. We talking about the whole group. Yeah, so one of the guys passed, right? Right. Yeah. So, so for those that don't know, um, Moons has been with us since 2016. Oh, yeah, okay. the group Lighter Shade. Uh, I lost my partner DWTX, who was the original member. So, um, so yeah. So Moons joined us uh, in 2016. He's been touring with us, you know, since my partner DWTX, Bobby. Um, rest in peace. Passed away in 2016. What? Mm-hmm. What? What? And I gotta um, ask you, like, what happened? So our viewers will know too. We gotta get into that. But, but go ahead. Let, let, to, to, to backpedal here, well, the way we met was we were put together um, by our manager, Cliff Ritchie. Um, we didn't grow up in the same neighborhood. Well, kind of like two different sides. Like, you know what I'm saying? West side, south side, whatever. But uh, long story short, man, we just uh, we got in the booth like in 89 and we just started recording demos together. You know, he, he had a certain flow. He had that voice, man. And, uh, you know, I had them bars, man. I was new. Say it again? wasn't it was you just had two short back then and it wasn't a lot of groups out, you know, on the West Coast back then. Right. What year was uh, this? Eighty nine. Well we, we dropped it in ninety was our first album, our first single. Okay. But y'all yeah. but did y'all chart in ninety as well? We did. Wow. Yeah. And the only one I could think of, maybe Kid Frost back then. Frost. So the and way he, the, he he signed he went with uh, uh Ruthless. Uh, he was with Rufus. He was on. Uh, no, he was Brown on. Side was uh, no, he, he was. Uh, Brown, Brown, Brown side Brown ended side up with Easy. That's Rufus. right. That's yeah. right. Um, God, I want to. I want to say Capital. Or, no, I want to say Atlantic. Frost was on on Atlantic. Atlantic. I'm not okay. Yeah. So it, the way it went was. Frost, he'd been doing his thing since the yeah. early 80s. Just you know what I'm saying? Russell. Yeah. Prior yeah, to that, he was doing breakdancing yeah. music. Damn sure. He grew up with Ice T. So him and Ice T used to battle. Shout out Ice T, man. Boss Talk 101. He'd been on here. Back in the day. And then he finally dropped his radio hit, which is La Raza, in, in, in 90. Um, I'm sorry. Mellow Man Ace was yeah. the first one. Yeah. Mentirosa. Mm. Which was the first Latino just on mainstream yeah. from the West Coast. Yeah. yeah. Mentirosa. And then Frost had La Raza. And then Lighter Shade of Brown came out. Man, Lighter Shade of Brown. Yeah. How did you, like, when y'all first charted, like, how did you feel, like, to even... It was amazing. You know, E, it was a roller coaster ride, because here I am, 16, you know what I mean, fresh out of high school. I had to prove to my my, my classmates that I was going to be somebody, because they got tired of hearing it. I'm going to get signed. Man, when I see you on MTV... A year later, I was on MTV. Man. So you were so like around like, 19 at that time? Nah, nah I, was, I was 16, man. <laughs> You're 16, you were When we did young. Sunday Afternoon, when we did Latin Active, when wow. we did all these joints back then, I was only 16. I was wow. fresh out of high school, and then I was I was called to be on the road. Mm-hmm. So I got on home studies, and then this and that. Man, I was like, didn't graduate because I already found what I wanted to do. So I just kept it pushing. Wow. DWT, Bobby was like four years older than me, so you know him and I, we just started touring, man, and... Um, you know, but but it came so fast to answer your question. You know, thankfully we had a great radio team at our label, Quality Records. Shout out to Russ Regan, Cliff Ritchie was our manager, and back in those days it was all about backpacking, man. CDs, cassettes, Damn. hitting the boulevard, yep. hitting the Nissan trucks, man. You know what I'm saying? The low riders, and by the end of the night, bam, you had everybody Astro bumping Vans. it, man. Astro Vans. Stop playing. <laughs> we came, I'm, I'm with you, Bro, baby. Stop, look, I'm with you, look, baby. Look, we came to <laughs> Dallas in an Astro Van from Cali. Yeah, yeah. So we didn't have no money for flights we were on the come up so it was like hey we about to hit this road so we come to Texas and we man I know y'all remember Simon the Diamond come and, on, man. And, and, and Alan Hammer come and on, man. those promoters they bring us to uh, um, um, Rhythm Nations yeah, back in yeah, the day yeah. and, and and Simon the Diamond had that one Mexican club it was a Tejano club um I can't remember, but these cats, man, that's, how, man, the Whippet contest, I, bro, I, was, I remember through. all that like it was yeah, yesterday, bro. Yeah, come through, young, so, young man. Nations, that was a spot, bro, in Dallas, and, and we would come back a few times, and that was like 90, first year, man, 90. Wow, So wow. We, Yeah, man, that there was just a hustle, bro. Like, there was no social media, you no, know what I'm saying? No. None of that, so everything was 
by the by the, by the hustle city to city. But thankfully, we got on the radio, and that just that just set us off, man. You wow. know, all the Southwest. You said y'all were the third group that that came up during that era. Third Hispanic group, right? As far as radio, I claim the mainstream. Yeah, okay. now if you want to throw somebody else out there, let's go. Because I'm <laughs> she ready. She is Jamaican. No, she is. Oh, okay. I thought she was going to come out of the show. She was going to come out of the She don't do her research on music. She try to stay away from that. That's him. You don't have to worry about that. I'm going to The first one that you mentioned, were they influential in your come up? Um, well, I was I was a fan of Melo Manes' song, mm -hmm. Mente Rosa. Like, I right. was in high school. So, like, I remember that, hearing that on the radio and him coming to town, performing. There was a girl that I went to school with. She's like, I'm going to see Melo Manes. I was like, really? He said, yeah. And then she came back the next day with a shirt and this and that. I was like, that's dope. That's going to be me one day. And sure enough, man, like a year, it happened. You know, I, I got introduced to the game by... The first female rapper on Easy E's, uh, she was on Priority Records. Her Look name? her up. Her name's Big Lady K. Okay. 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 She was like uh, part of that whole female movement between her, rest in peace, MC Trouble. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Remember yeah, her? Yeah. She's yeah. from the West Coast. But Big Lady K had a song called Don't Get Me Started. Mm -hmm. And uh, she attended my high school. She mm -hmm. got transferred and I saw her. I go, man, I just bought your single last week at Warehouse Records, man. I was like, what's up? Can I be, you know, can yeah. introduce me to your manager? So she did. I went to a payphone. She gave me the payphone. I rapped over it, did like a verse for, for the homie, for the manager. And uh, he was like, man, let's, let's, let's do, do it. it. There's no Latino rappers in mainstream right now. Like this was a wave that was just about to be started on the West Coast. Mm. Wow. So while I was being shopped as a solo artist, as ODM, uh, that's when Frost came out with La Raza. So his plans were, oh shit, we, it's, it's off to the races. We got to find, partner you up with somebody to make you a group. So there's where he went on the west side. My DJ at the time was DJ Fabe Love. So on that on our first cover, there's three of us. If you look on the Brown and Proud album, there's uh, me, Bobby, and then Fabian. Fabian knew Bobby from high school. And he goes, man, I got Bobby here, man. He know how to rap. So that's why I, I, we got put together and we started doing a demo Damn. and it took us a year exactly to, to, to get a record deal. Why did he want to put y'all as a group instead of shopping you as an individual artist? Was it Why was that so was, important? Why is it so important? Was it groups was more of an in thing back then or something? I, I would just say because there was already a Mexican rapper, quote unquote, solo oh, okay. that was doing it. Okay. So he wanted to be, I, I don't know, He there was no group mm -hmm. that was on radio. So, uh, yeah, that was just his plan, man. Just, he just put us together, and, and uh, that was it. The rest was history. We started making demos. Wow. I, I just want, I, I know I've I seen where you guys in Cypress Hill had your little, you know, back and forth yeah. beef. Like, what was that? And just explain to me what kind of, and I know you've talked about it, but for our listeners, like, yeah. how was that? What caused it? What, yeah. what was the issue? You know, it's funny because, like, B-Real and I... Like, I seen B-Real on Vlad. Yeah, yeah. So I used to go to B-Real's house frequently. I met B-Real and Send Dog, which is Melaman Ace's brother, you know, uh, uh, back in the day. And I would, I would, you know, go with Melo to Southgate and go kick it with them. Um, this is right, right at the beginning when they were about to drop the Killer Man album. Um, and... Uh, they just when they drop, it was it was like eight months after we did, okay. Mm. But they just had that 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 different that different sound. It yeah. wasn't it wasn't on like rasa shit. No or no it wasn't no, on, no, you no. Know, Chicano no, shit. No, it was, it was like on with some straight hip hop. Ice I'm going Cube, to New York. Uh, yeah, all yeah. them boys was you you. They was in the same little old you know little old, what you call a mirage. Like you, right. you would think of them as you thought about you know the hip hop, the core hip hopness. You right, know? right. Straight that straight underground, you yeah. Say, like Q was in his video, Q, Q Tip uh, was in the yeah, video. Yeah, Q Tip, yeah. Everybody gravitated towards these guys, and they didn't know what they were until the video came out. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, well, with that being said, um, we were cool with them in the beginning. We saw them like just blow up out of nowhere. Well, it was it was at a one show that we did, and uh, everybody had that that that. That signature hip hop move, you know, with your knees go up like this on stage. Yeah, 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 you know, yeah, like, yeah. Knees yeah. of the yeah. new school type yeah. shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? And we were all doing that little cadence. You know what I mean? All like boom, boom, boom. And then uh, we saw them come out. You know, and, and I'm mad enough to admit this. They they came out on stage at a show we did together, 
And their intro song was check, 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 check it out. Check it out. Check, 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 check it out. That, you know, that was Cypress. I was like, shit, yo, that's dope. So we went and wrote a song about it. <laughs> <laughs> that was their intro. I was like, they ain't doing it with a song, but that's dope. And then D double T Bobby was like, man, let's just turn that into a song. So for a minute there, everybody was trying to do that Cypress sound. Yeah. You know, uh, man, DJ Muggs. Yeah, 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 yeah. All yeah. these obscure songs with the SP1200. You know, he was just, he just had that grimy, dirty sound. And even Q, man, check yourself for your record. Yeah, like his, yeah. his, his whole, his remix, I think, or not the, not, not the, uh, the wet, the, the funk one, but there was another one that he did. But Muggs was doing a grip of, uh, uh, um, remixes, right? Yeah. So anyway, we had dropped the song called Check It Out. They got wind of it. And basically, they were upset. This is this is my uh, your take on my it. take on it. That these motherfuckers, you know, they bit us. You know what I'm saying? And next thing you know, out of nowhere, we hear one of their albums come out, and they dissing us and Frost in the same um, sentence. Something about something about get down, looking for a fat boy, and a lot of shade of clowns. And somebody had told me that, and I was like, "What? These motherfuckers dissed us?" At first, I was like, "Dope," you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> I you gotta have thick skin in this shit. Another part of me was like, "Fuck these motherfuckers! Let's get in the studio let's and let's the go studio. rip their asses." Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, which we ended up doing. So we went and we recorded a whole diss song with it, and and it never came out. Why? Funny, fast, uh, just the label. They didn't want. They wanted. They to didn't want to go there. Yeah. Clean, you yeah. know what I'm saying? We was a household name. With yeah. Sunday after, we had like. You know, moms you and it kids. Came and, out? Yeah, you the hip hop side of me. Hell yeah! Well, get at them, man. Boys. I was brought up freak man, free fuck written rap. Do you homie. think it would have lit them up? It would have hit them hard. Yeah, now, we probably would have went back and forth. Yeah, it would have been I a good little scuffle. That's hip hop. That's hip hop. Yeah. yeah, look at to this day, Kendrick and Jay and and all yeah. them, man. Mm -hmm. you, 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 By the way, I wouldn't have never apologized. I was about to ask you that. Why would you do that? I was gonna say that. Like, Come on, what Jay. Did you, you felt like hip hop, and like, damn, hip hop took a L when we did that. Yeah, it, it, when J. Cole, Cole took Cole. a L when he did that. Damn. Yeah, it makes it, it, nah. That's on him. He shouldn't have done that. Nah, you don't do a diss song two days later and apologize. Why? That only means one thing. Either okay, uh, coming to my senses. It's too late. It's, it's too out late. There. He don't want. He don't want to smoke. That's he he don't want Kendrick to come back. I heard Drake just dropped one today too. Somebody sent yes, me a link. Yes, I saw that. I, saw I never that. apologize. That's what mine would be. Yeah. You. Yeah. <laughs> this hip hop. Yeah. I never apologize would be the name of the song. No. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Like the bars are <laughs> some bars. So so I mean you know like you guys man like you guys ran. Mm. And and how was touring back then? Let's talk about that. Like, how was um, it hitting these cities? Like, by, by the way, just to finish up the conclusion, oh, go, 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 go with back. the B-roll thing, yeah. we're cool now. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, because we, we did leave that in them, Bo. We, we, yeah, we did. And and, and uh, there was one other little incident that people don't know. Remember, they was on Drink Champs. Oh. And uh, they, they had said something like they was the first Latins from the West Coast to come out. And somebody sent it to me, and I kind of like, Reposted it. I was like, man, nah, like you're tripping. Like here I came. I was like, nah, man, this is facts. We we was, you know what I'm saying? It was like on some like you know shit. B roll got at me and was like, yo, bro, you really feel that type of way, man? I thought we was all past that and this and that. Y'all came out eight months after we did or mm. before we did, and it was real. I go, yeah, but eight months is eight months, right? I'm sorry. I mean, you know, but. And, and and that came. I started thinking about it after letting it go. He was like, "Well, you know, come on my podcast, man. Let's talk about it. This and that." And I'm like, "Nah, I'm cool, man. Wow. I'm all right." And then um, I started thinking about it, and I was like, "You know what? We we grown as man. We bickering over like, you know, comadre shit. Like this is like, Smart. you know, like like wow. you know, what I'm saying like." What what is that gonna look back then? It didn't look right if you if you and I and and Frost were beefing because we all were beefing at one point. You know, to our fans, for, if anything, I says, man, this is our last leg, bro, whether you like it or not. I said, we all in our 50s. Mm -hmm. So why are we even going to let this little shit yeah, fucking, man, at least there's motherfuckers dying. We just lost OJ. We just lost everybody dying left and right. That's what I'm saying. Why are we going to leave? A, there's no telling you if you're going to be here tomorrow, if I'm going right. to be here tomorrow. So let's just make mans. And he was like, all right, bro, I go, bro, I'd love to come on your pod, but I ain't smoking on that shit. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I don't get high now for what? Fun. I already learned on my shit, bro. Yeah. Like, they, 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 man, I saw Mello with a face mask on his shit. I was like, man. I was like, Let me ask you, you know, I, No, I got to ask about, about, about the fact of how, how tough was it trying to understand that 
when you psychologically thinking about Bobby and thinking about what he would think about it. You know what I mean? What's what's that? The, For the, diss? The, the diss and just the conversation that's being had about the eight months and just being that he's gone now and you yeah. having to try to think it through on your own or how you would feel about it, you know? Bobby, I know Bobby Bobby been like, fuck that motherfucker. That, <laughs> that, that, like, that, that's how he was. That He would just pop off, you yeah. know what I mean? I was more the level-headed, the level-headed let one. me think it out, you know, think it through. Um, of course, I'm going to protect mine too and stand yeah. on mine if, 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 you know, and try to be reasonable about it. You know what I'm saying? But uh, this was just, you know, a grown folk talk, an older age. And, but it, we were acting like, I think, kind of children, you know. And it's just, I was because I brought it up. You know what I'm saying? I don't apologize for what I did because facts are facts. I'll pull up screenshots and it'll show you. You know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, what's it really getting us? Bragging rights? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I get it. Because you, you are the future and you got people coming up under you. That's what it is. Like, I got cats like Money Moon. There you, you know go. what I mean? You, got money moon. you know what I'm you saying? Don't, like, you don't want them seeing that holding on this yeah. stuff, you know? And, and, you know, at least the OGs can keep it together. Maybe on, that, maybe then we can. You know what I mean? Yeah. As, as the younger. Because I always wonder when rappers do beef against each other and stuff like that, do they ever think about their fans when they're doing these beefs or they're just thinking about themselves? themselves? Because they, one thing I always notice that you have a beef with somebody, these fans are taking upon themselves and having beefs against the people who, each other. Right, right. You know what I mean? Oh, you team such and such, I'm team such and such, and it causes... Right. It can spill into the streets. It can spill into the streets over something that y'all are doing. Absolutely. So do y'all ever think about stuff like that when y'all into it? We did back then. I mean, of course, we were never the aggressive type. Like, we keep it strictly hip-hop, obviously, you Mm know. Um... But I mean, even nowadays, it's on a different level. So now you got everybody commenting social media. Then those those fans now, right. are you see their comments, That's you right. see them attacking. Like same fools who follow us, you know, on our podcast or whatever, are following the next man's, and they're and, and like you got a lot of them instigating exactly the shit too. Exactly. And there's those cats. So those are some of the cats that that be actually yeah. setting up. You know, what mm-hmm. what and and you got some podcasters, or I say that because you know I do the podcast. Or rappers, whatever you want to say, they can't they can't handle the comments. Mm-hmm. They don't have thick skin. They, man, me, I, I, a hit is a hit to me. Bring it on. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Because I know I got people, twenty other motherfuckers are going to respond to them. That's right. So I, but to answer your question, nah, it's I, I don't, I don't, I don't really think about it when it comes to hip hop because what I'm doing is strictly hip hop. Like I said, mm-hmm. you know, uh, it, it's not to where back in the day when we had a beef with Frost. We had another one. It was like he was, he was sick here a little bit about a year ago too. When I yeah. went out to Vegas, he in Vegas, right? Yeah, yeah. He had that open heart surgery, yeah. man. He, yeah, he'll tell you he had his heart right there on the table, man. He tri- bypass, man. Wow. And, but he's still out there doing shows. He's doing you know? his thing. Let's go back yeah. into it though. What did you guys have with people? We just, uh, you know, Frost is hit or miss. He'll tell <laughs> you. Everybody yeah. will tell you. Everybody who's met Frost, you know, and and. Uh, you know, it, Frost is either you hate him or you love him. You know what I'm saying? And, and you know, it got to the point when we first met, it was like, um, I don't know, it was because we we headlined one certain show back in Pomona back in the day. We were new. We were the, we were the new fresh meat. You know what I'm saying? And he saw that. He saw us getting play. And this is my take. But I, I go by your energy. So if I meet you in person for the first time mm-hmm. and you shake my hand and you do this to me and don't look me at, first of all, I, you got to look at every man in the eye when you, I don't care who you are. Yeah. Like that, That's just me. That's where I was raised, brought up. But it was just kind of like one of those, yeah, right, man, you know. Big, and he got yeah. up and he went and talked to his homie. You know what I'm saying? I'm giving him props. Right. Mind you, he sent us a postcard a year prior when we were shopping for our demo. Wow. Like, yo, he was in London. Yo, this Frost, I heard you guys, uh, man, hey, man, keep it up, little homies, and booty whoop. Well, the little homies came up, and now we're on radio. Now we're here, and I'm like, I, it was like meeting your your favorite artist, you know what I'm saying? And it's, it did not go as planned as you thought. And now you're like, man. Because, you know, for every negative. He ain't nothing like I thought he was going to be. And, and, but, but later on, we, we kind of. I know that. But I'm that led a- to, like, concerts, you know, him going dissing us. Then we come to the next city. Yo, remember, no show social media. So we'd go there, the next city. Oh, Frost was just here last week dissing you on stage. Wow. I'm like, why? 
Fuck that motherfucker. <laughs> you know, hey, first we want to let y'all know we can have top 30 here right now on Billboard. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, like, yeah, we hold on. Talking our shit, yeah. you know? But it was like, whatever. But that that that's as far as it really got. Yeah. We, we we had one little uh, run-in with him in L.A., and, and he had his Latin Alliance group, you know? They had the lowrider song. Shout outs to ALT, Saint, and all them back in the day. It was before a ALT and I were cool. But yeah, they 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 try to run up on us backstage at a show and and it, Got was, ugly. Just, it, it was just you know and it, yeah, it was just words. That's hip hop. It was words, <laughs> man. It was words. That was the only time that that we. How did y'all resolve y'all differences? Again, going back to fraud, I think it was more him. It was it was more him accepting the fact that all right, these dudes are gonna be around for a while because mm -hmm. we just was dropping hit after hit after hit on the radio. Yeah, and after a while, it was like one day his just attitude changed towards us. Like we we showed up at the studio, um, and and we was gonna do a song together. It was us, a lot of shade of brown, Frost, Melaman Ace. And then I was uh, uh, um, Baby Bash, who was Baby Beach back okay. then, with mm -hmm. Latino Velvet, with, with shout outs to uh, uh, JT from N2 Deep. They had a little gr a group going man, on. Man, N2 Deep. So, so we were all there, and we showed up, and it was just all love, man. It was like nothing happened. I was like, wow. cool. That's the same energy we should have, should man. Should have, yeah. And you got your cool. respect. Got my respect to the point. My mom was even booking his shows. <laughs> my mom used to manage that's a, us that's at wow. one point. That's how you know. So he was booking. So he could call up mom. You know, and they, they, my mom knew everybody in the game. Bash. He was booking everybody. Mallow, Frost, like, and um, you couldn't help but just you know like our. our how did y'all? How did you guys ended up? You met Tupac. Yeah. So let's talk about that. When did that happen? Man, this was like in what, like '92. We were doing a show up in, in Washington. Okay. And uh, it was one of the, back in the days when they used to have those summer jams. We yeah. had like 20, 25 acts on stage. Yeah. But all hitters, you know what I'm yeah. saying? And so we're out there, you know, with Cube in Seattle. And, and you know, we're, we're standing backstage. And it's me, uh, Bobby. And then you had a, a gangstar, a, a guru uh, from Gangstar. And then you have Fat Lip and the homie, um, um, the other homie from Farside. We're all standing in a circle, just chopping up backstage. Pac's on stage. He's got a live band playing, right? He wow. just dropped Poetic Justice. Man. So there, he's, he's man, he's, you know, on top of the world right now. And and I remember we're just have, having a conversation. And then next thing you know, you know, his show gets over with. And he comes down in our circle. We're just chilling. Comes up, typical Pac, hat to the back. Hat you know, what's back. up? Where the weed at? You know what I'm man. saying? And my partner, Bobby, you know what I'm saying? He reaches in his pocket and he pulls out a, uh, one of the little camera rolls. You know, back in the, the yeah, the, yeah, the yeah. Develop, and um, he was man, I got some right here, homie. What's cracking? He was like, light it up, man. What's up? So, man, they, Bobby starts riding, you know, rolling the joint right. There. I didn't smoke, you know, I still don't. Yeah. But I was like, well, shit, I had my poetic justice hat on. Yeah. You know, I mean, I yeah. just saw the movie. I was like, hey, bro, can you sign this? Wow. So I was like, man. So he signed my shit right there, then and there, man. But. What you do with that hat? I was about to say, do you still have it? What the hell you do with that hat, man? I ain't got it. Oh, damn, the the damn man. Same scenario, man. Damn. Same scenario, same scenario. man. Damn, I, we got, but that was one. Boy, that would be worth it. Exactly. I can't mean, keep my shit. I priceless. Can't, I had the same scenario with Easy e What happened with Easy? I was 13 <laughs> years old, man. I saw Easy e at Knott's Berry Farm, man. This is before I even got into high school, man. And, and he was walking with his girl. No, I saw him at this club. And he, at Knott's Berry Farm called Studio K, and he was with his two bodyguards. I go, fuck, that's Easy E, man. He just dropped, um, I'm on the radio, radio. Yeah, that one went hard, yeah, boy. Yeah, yeah. That one went hard, yeah, man. The cover, man, with the, with the Jordans on, man, the sweatsuit. And I was like, E, what's up, man? Let me get an autograph, man, you know? And I wanted him to sign my hat. Well, long story short, he was like, all right, home, g give me a minute. I'm just chilling right now. I was like, all right, cool. So I waited in the corner. And I was just, I just turned my head or something, looking at, you know, some females or something. I looked back, and he was gone. And I was like, damn. I go, man. I go, I didn't. So then later on in the in, in the park, I see him walking with his girl. They're holding stuffed animals. Him and uh, um, his, his girl, <laughs> and then uh, his, uh, I think they had a daughter, a little girl with him. Uh, and uh, I go, my boy's like, hey man, they're, they're, they're go, he hit him up. And I was like, oh man, I don't wanna bother. I, he right. goes, man, you better hit him up, dog. It's now or never. So my boy actually drove me to you know hit him. So I was like, yo, E. I go, what's up, dog? I go, man, you, you said you were gonna sign my hat. He looked at his girl. He had his uh, the stuffed animals. He handed the stuffed animals to his girl. 
and he came over to me and he sat down. It was like a little planner, you know, the, the little, the, like you see in the mall, little, mm -hmm. little planner, little seat, little bench. He sat down next to me, grabbed my hat. He didn't have a Sharpie, he had a pen like this. Yeah. Okay, so if you sign an autograph, which I know you sign a lot of autographs, E. I'm big time like you that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you got to trace over your letters. That's right. right. It's not a Sharpie no. where you can just do right. one take. Oh, you got, uh, so he took about five minutes at least, and five minutes is a long time Yeah. Um, to sign each letter and it said to Robert Easy motherfucking E. Wow. I don't know what that hat says. Damn, man! <laughs> That's I'm so bad. Up, Come dog. on, I'm man. Fucked up, dog. Two legends right Damn. there. Damn. You feel me? Probably you had your heart, way. right? You you know, you gotta blame that but on you. But know you what? Place. I got the memory. Mm -hmm. Man, I got the memory. You got the memory. And, and that's uh, that's really maybe that's why I don't visit cemeteries either. Man, yeah, that's I, another I, conversation, but I gotta uh, ask you like like Easy E, like he got the street named after him out there, man. How big was that? Uh, did, oh yeah, yeah like, recently. Like, yeah, yeah recently. Week, yeah. I think e little easy yeah, posted it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It got the street. How big was that in Compton? Man, well, I, I just heard about it. You, you told me about it. Or... Yeah, I just looked. Up, I just seen e little easy posted. It. it looked like it was a big celebration. You it know, was. yeah. All the fans were out there. All his family. All that. We were so with Lil Easy Eazy like the week before. And he, yeah, he was shout out to Lil Easy, man. Yeah. I'm happy for them, bro. And yeah. how big was it? Even the Grammy, like they got they got recognized at the Grammy Awards yeah. as well. Like it's been a good year for Easy, man. Yeah, he's you know? he's, yeah. he's he's busy. I think he's going to. Uh, he said he's going to Australia like in a couple yeah. couple months yeah, or something. Yeah, he was saying that. Yeah, we I'm happy to, for him, man. Yeah. I really am because I wanted to see. I love to see the kids get their roses, like Pimp C son, yeah, uh, Corey, and both his sons, and then like uh, I, I deal with. Uh, so I deal with Little Soldier Slim. Slim. I deal with um, uh, Shorty Low Junior. Mm. All them, you know, sons that yeah. left behind. It's crazy to see them. That, that, that they're still not carrying, trying to you push know I mean? it and keep the name. I think uh, Little Shorty Low just had uh, Shorty Low Day uh, uh, like in a week Atlanta. ago in Dope. Atlanta. So they still trying Dope. to keep the legacy alive, you know. And hell, Nate Dog Son still, oh, wow. he's still he's pushing. singing. Yeah. yeah, that's good. Um, JJ Fad just got their street last year. Really? Yeah, yeah. that's hard. In Rialto, yeah. man, the IE, yeah. So that's that's dope, man. Like, so for you, like, when you think about like the NWA, the group, I gotta ask you about them when they first came out, the gangster, you know, movement. How was that for you seeing that movement? You know, I grew up in in in, in Santana, man, right there in, in in the neighborhood. So it was all around me. So yeah. when 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 they came out, uh, I think the first song I heard was uh, was Dope Man. And I was in, I think, seventh grade, some shit. And I just heard, I just remember that, that funky yeah. worm. And I was like, this shit's hard. And all the homies that gangbang were, or, or either the gangbangers or they were rappers, they, they, were, they were rapping that shit. They Love introduced it. me to that. Cause you hear it in the streets. Cause back then, you know, cruising wasn't a crime, you no, know, no. And, and music wasn't either. You know, we used to bump that shit loud. So I would hear it all up and down the streets. I'm like, man, who's this? You know, and little guy always trying to find out new music. And, but when the, the content I heard, it, it didn't really affect, you know what I'm saying? It didn't really uh, affect me too much because that was going on in my neighborhood, mm -hmm. just like when Colors came out. I was going to say something about that because we, we, we actually uh, interviewed Ice-T, and when we interviewed Ice-T, we talked about that Colors. He actually said Rick James was the first one to make the Colors song, and I mm -hmm. knew it would have been whack as hell. Yeah. <laughs> it yeah. been, he said it was whack. It was that, wasn't his, that wasn't his lane, and, and then they got... They got my boy Ice T. Like, how was how was the Ice T thing and the colors thing? That was another thing I was going to just yeah. ask you guys. I about. remember I remember being a little kid, man, seventh grade, going to the movie theater and and every every theater you saw that the, the weekend it came out, man, just had helicopters. You know, the yeah, ghetto we bird was, was killing just it flowing, too, man. down here, and it was just all it was gang wild, wasn't yeah, it? bloods and crips, man. So, you, how much you think that amplified the whole gang culture? That was pretty much the. The the, the the beginning beginning of it I would yeah, say yeah you know especially when uh, you know NWA just just dropped like it was all in that same era mm -hmm. you know what I mean that same two years right yeah, yeah. didn't NWA come out after Colors or was it I think I think Colors was first bro yeah Col so Colors was like eighty seven Colors but, was first bro I was I was young six. bro. We have to look young. that one up, man. I think Colors was first, but man. it was right around look the same up, time. Man. Yeah. I think I think Colors was first because I was early. bumping Ice T, man, and I was Ice bumping T, his pusher pusher shit, pusher, like yeah. you know, and and six in the morning, yeah, yeah, you know, and all that. So that wasn't really that was more some pimp shit, yeah, yeah. But but then he dropped Colors, which it was more of a positive song. 
but then you saw the movie and it was like, okay, we Woo. get it. But then NWA came and that just kind of like, you See know, what, deal. What, what a special let's say. He said uh, that they, 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 um, NWA, they glorified the, the how they killed it. They killed hip hop in, 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 in sort of ways well, by glorifying it. They ruined hip hop. <laughs> so got, so many words. Yeah, yeah, I know. Go look, look it up. Don't quote they me. They always <laughs> do that, though, because it's just somebody else carrying the ball because they could only carry it so far. That's what I was thinking. Come on, That's man. how I came. They tried, and, they, they, yeah. and then it came to the South. It came from the right. They went to the West, then it came to the South. And right. it's just, it did start in New York, but when you think about it, man, that's 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 hip hop, man. It's hip hop. It's, it's our people. It's our culture, man. It's 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 really it's just what that is, you know. Right. And and we just gotta accept that. And you've seen the numbers. I mean, it made a lot of people a lot of money. It's entrepreneurship and everything wrapped up with a bow around it. Right. You it was no different than the message, man. You know, Melly Mel and them rapping about yeah, what was going on in the yeah. streets. That's right. Easy, and then we're doing the same thing. Yeah, just but different. they were just. Yeah. They were showing you in their videos, yeah, and yeah. I think that's kind of where he was coming from. But I'm with you, though, man. Like, it's hip-hop, man. There was it's, still, it's our there, culture, bro. That, that's it. Yeah. And that jealousy thing, like I said, because it's going from one place to another, they love it, bro. So I ain't mad at them about it. I just know that that love, you know, you like, damn, man, they ain't treating it right. We started it. it it's going to make you feel a way, bro. Yeah. You know, I don't blame it on them. You know, I blame it on their on they mind, not their heart or something. You hmm. know what I'm saying? Right. You know it's like, saying? why did Ice Cube write, fuck the police? Because that was going on in their that neighborhood. Was going on. So because we bring an awareness to it, like, but to them it's glorifying because you're actually, now you got some youngsters listening to you mm -hmm. but, saying fuck the police in Arkansas. But, and you know, I love, I don't lie, I'm a big EPMD fan. I ain't got his pitch up there, but I know mm -hmm. I took one. Yeah. Like, I'm a Shots big. to Eric and yeah, P. Yeah, Eric and P. I'm a, I'm a big fan of uh, Rakim and Eric First B. ones to sample more bounce of the house. That she went EPMD. hard, too. It went hard. Man. Well, hard. But I got a question because it's so crazy that you, you talk about the police and stuff like that because what I was going to ask you is when I was watching Straight Outta Compton, I saw how a lot of times they were profiled by the police in a lot of different ways. Did you ever have any situations in the earlier stages coming yeah, up? Oh, yeah. During, during our release. Like going back to those days of passing out cassettes, one scenario, we were on a boulevard. We were at Hollywood Boulevard. And we were, you know, passing our cassettes. And, you know, there's patrols everywhere, especially when cruising is going on. Big cruise night. And we go up to a couple of homies, ball-headed, tattoos, you know what I'm saying? We we, we pull up, hey, homies, what's, you know, what, what's going down? Hey, it's ODM, DWT, we're Lighter Shade of Brown. We're a new Chicano rap group, man, from the West Coast. You know, coming out of Cali, man, check out our shit. We were handing them cassettes. Two cops rolled up on us. You know, we had our backpacks, and they were like, they they they, 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 you could, they probably thought it was a drug deal yeah, or something. Right. They ended up grabbing our backpacks, throwing them on the ground, smashing them with their feet. You know what mm. I'm saying? And I'm like, what the fuck, man? Like, and here I'm innocent. Like, you know what I mean? But it's just their, um, their judge, poor lack poor of judgment. Jury, yeah. You know what I mean? Um, I got pulled over a few times back in the 90s, you know, because I, I rocked the ball. Hey, or fade. Yeah. Yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and just... Wear my hat certain ways, but I mean, it's just that typical judgmental, you know, thing that, you know, some of, some of the officers out there, right. you know, that wow. they, they want to fuck with you, they will. Did you guys ever link with Fat Joe? No, nah, we met him on a couple occasions, you know. With I just think about the Latino side of yeah. it. Yeah, uh, Pun, we met Pun too. I mean, met uh, Pun? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, oh, I, man. I repeat the Pun, man. Yeah, Good for job. sure. Pun was like on the West Coast. We did a show with him and... Um, I, I, it was. I was. It? it was in Bakersfield. It was dope, man. It was. It was us, Pun, Fat Joe's with him, and um, Cuban Link, and they were all out there. And um, Pun came out on stage, man, and he had a. Uh, he had a. He, he was up for a little bit, but then he had to sit down his whole show because he was just so big. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, he wasn't. Yeah. Damn near. Happy. I mean, even yeah. at me, I struggle. You know, when I get up there, a little yeah. way, like I can't do it no more. Like I, well, I'm not 20 no more. You know exactly. what I mean? So. It's important, you know, you know, hit the gym, you get your cardio, <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? Right. But, but Pun was up there, that was just my memory, he was cool as fuck, man, and, and Fat Joe was even, there's there's an actual a cover out there with the Industry Insider, and it was an old school magazine, man, okay. you looked that up, and it had all the fucking Latin rappers on the cover. It was black and white, I mean, it had Cypress, it had Frost, it had wow. uh, um, so, some other uh, New York cats that were, that were out at that time, I can't think of them, uh, Mello was on there, Pun, uh, Fat Joe, everybody but us. Mm. And it's what? Because the label didn't want to fly us out. Oh, okay. 
Yeah. So there's they had a, money, they had budget. Stop. Yeah, playing, man. You know, sometimes you gotta just you know you gotta take money and make. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. So that that was that was our encounter with with, with them. And then our label was like, we, we learned that too, because they didn't want to put us, we got invited to do Lollapalooza. Wow. Back in the day, that was like today's Coachella. And um, they didn't want to pay for our, uh, they, they had a, you know what I'm saying? They were like, yeah, we got a stage for them, but the label, it was an independent label. Yeah, I get it. I but get we it. outgrew it, you know Y'all what I mean? outgrew it. Being one of the first rap groups on air, and stuff <laughs> like that, um, Hispanic rap groups back then, um, what are some of the difficulties that you face coming up in, in the rap game? Compared to when you look at the younger kids now coming up, that they didn't have, they don't have to face that. I mean, same issues. I mean, just being Mexican in hip hop, it's always uh, something that's brought up because you get looked at a certain way. That's the same reason why Cypress, if you look at their first album, they were smart. They they put their heads down. They're wearing a hoods. You can't see their faces because mm. they didn't want to be stereotyped at oh some lad. I ain't even gonna listen to this type shit. You know, I ain't, I ain't even gonna put the cassette in and listen just based off whether. And so these were some of the you know obstacles we had to overcome to kind of show and prove ourselves. We had to work extra hard because we were a different race. We're di you know in this hip hop culture, we all respect the fact that it's a black art form. You know what I'm saying? And but realize we all bump it and buy it. Yeah. So it's an influence on us too. It's it's you know makes me want to go and write some bars. You know, I I grew up on Big Daddy Kane, Rock Come on now. Those were my heroes yeah mine too you know and, and uh that was that was freestyle that was those were bars to me that's what i learned hip-hop but yeah i would say just being latino and it's like oh man we would we would uh go to black neighborhoods like i remember like in chicago man when we first started going out there to promote our records and we drive to the black neighborhoods and we drive to the latino neighborhoods over there and you know they're separated, yeah, south separated side, west yeah. side yeah, so, north side. But but I remember doing a show specifically out there, and this would I, how I remember was we had a uh, Hey DJ out at the time, and um, and we went on stage and was with Outkast, and we oh, we won the crowd over because you know the song was hot Hey DJ, <coughs> and then so coming off Sunday afternoon and so on and so forth. Outcast got on stage and got booed. Whoa. Mm. And, 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 and it was an all black crowd and we got props. Wow. So I'm like, what so, year was this? Man, this was like, well, Outcast just dropped Southern Playlistic. So, oh, it was then? Yeah. So 94 or something like that. 90, I think that's when it dropped. Yeah. And they, they booed got them. booed. And I remember when they addressed the crowd, they said, hey, man, y'all, we just from the South, man. It was Andre. He was like, we were from the South, man. We he all just want to, we just out here doing our thing, man, you know, respectfully. Yeah. But you had you had disciples out there. You had all different kinds of gangs out there. That's why when they told us, they were like, hey, man, they may, and this was the first show that I ever got, like, nervous. If there was a <laughs> was show that I was nervous was about, nervous. it was like, man, not only is it all black crowd, but it's, it's, it's um, you know, there's, there's gangs out there, too, man. And I had heard... My partner was went went to the uh, 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 store that day and bought a leather jacket with a D on the back because mm -hmm. his name's D W T X. Yeah, but D is disciples, gang, right? Big ass D on the back <laughs> of a fucking leather jacket. And I'm like, bro, you ain't wearing that shit tonight, homie. <laughs> or you better turn that shit inside out, dog. And, 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 and so he didn't wear it. And never wore it again. But, uh, but yeah, you know, it was really shit. But that was a show that really opened our eyes. Were you ever performing and something pop off and you had to keep performing? All the time. I mean, it's usually it's technical shit. But you mean as far as gang shit? Yeah. Yeah, like, we'd be at shows and, it, you know, there was, you know, it's mainly our own people. Because, okay. you know, uh, obviously, you know, we're, we're a Chicano group, you know what I'm saying? based out of the, you know, Chicano hip hop group based out of uh, uh, California. And some, you know, sometimes you go to different hoods or different bodies performing. Sometimes they ain't gonna take like to you because they know you from a different side, you know? So there's been points where we, you know, times where we've had, you know, rags thrown at us or gang signs, you know, this is 90s. 90s were the most active fucking mm -hmm. gang era. Mm -hmm. So you could imagine, you know, fools are still jealous. They still hate. You know, they would either fight amongst each other or they 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 try to like catch up with us after the show or something. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So we had to be on our, you know, on our toes. But uh but we never brought that energy. Yeah. We was all about just music 
and females. Music and females, <laughs> baby. And that was it. That was it. So I remember stopping the show once too. I'm like, man, you guys paid, these motherfuckers paid all this money to come over here and worry about and gangbang on us when there's all these females in the crowd? Yeah. You're tripping, man. I want to, you know, something that I always thought about, like when the Biggie and the West Coast, East Coast thing was going on, how much did that affect the, the Latino, uh, you know, the culture? I mean, did you it? see what I'm saying? Um, Y'all doing shows, did it, did it affect Did it even guys? affect it? No. You see what I'm saying? No, because it had nothing to do. To do with y'all. Do with us. And y'all just it watched it. It was black it on black, black, if it's fair to say. And y'all watched it. Yeah. Even though it was coast versus coast. Coast versus coast, but it really was just black on black. Mexicans don't. Uh, it did, they didn't have a dog in the fight. I don't know. You, you guys know. Do you remember you that? Ne like, never it did affect, have. It like, never affected y'all at all. No. It's a baby. And, and, and <laughs> what did y'all think about it from that? What, what did, I'm not talking to you. <laughs> <laughs> you got both parents. Yeah, 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 you have both parents. <laughs> what <laughs> around when this went down? Now you, you just need to just hold on just one second. Let me get this out of DM. Like, did you? What did you think about it from about the outside the looking in? I just thought it was fucked up, man. Because again. Yeah, I am an artist, but at the same time, they was getting they were getting serious, bro. Like you didn't know what was gonna pop off, where, or what point. The way Pac was coming on those disses, you know what I mean, with toss it up and you know, you getting personal, personal. It's different from from I I don't know, I would say other beasts. I wouldn't I wouldn't do that. Mm -hmm. that, that just me. Like, you mm -hmm. know, I wouldn't talk about another man's you know, yeah, it was it was hard. It, it was it was it was low know? blows thrown. It was yeah. beneath the belt. wasn't no rules. All all rules was out. Yeah, but the biggest beef I would say to this to this, era, this day, to this yeah, day, in the nineties, I mean, that caused people's lives. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, um, and 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 to see how everything rolled out, it just it just was unfortunate, man, for both sides. You know, yeah, East and the West Coast. You know, but and at that point, Death Row was at its at its peak. You know what I'm saying? And it's a bad boy, and 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 then after that, it was like South took over. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you, you're right. You right. That was did it, you, Little John and all this. John, coming, was, man. did you ever did you ever do anything with like the, I, I asked agree for the same thing like Pow Wow and. All these guys, did you ever link up with the South at all? You mm. guys never did. Y'all was too, ah. y'all was too, too La Rasa. Like y'all was not <laughs> trying to. Y'all didn't mix and mingle. Y'all didn't do that with no black people. Shout out to Cypress Hill, man. Well, it's, <laughs> <laughs> you know what? You know what's crazy, man? We we had a song with Rapping Forte. That's hard. Yeah, give me something, baby. Rapping Forte, we That's did. That's my boy, right and there. And that too. happened like later, like uh, towards our last album. Um, no, but we we had we had some artists that you may not have heard of on our previous on yeah, Hip Hop yeah, Locals yeah. album. You know they were yeah. local trying to come up. Yeah, um, Mobile and shout outs to Mobile and said. Okay, you know, but uh, as as far as any features that were known, Rapping Forte probably be the Rapping Forte. One. I, yeah. I like Rapping Forte. You hit yeah. me. That's a hard one. Yeah, now, if you gonna have one, that's one to have yeah. right there. And that was on some West Coast shit. You yeah, know? he used to be with Too Short. You know, I don't play shit, no yeah. games with that right there. That's but it. You know what I'm saying? He came through, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he came yeah. through. But it's not like we didn't want to. It's just, we was just in our own lane, yeah, man. In your own lane. We didn't do a lot of features. I don't feel like we had to. Okay. You feel me? Like, there's yeah. some groups that just don't do features. That's and real. That, that, that was us. And if we did, we were trying to bring people up. I, I got to ask you this, man, because I'm going to go back to Bobby losing him like you did. Um, Pimp C, you know, Bun B, UGK, mm. he, he lost to Pimp. You know, like, how difficult... Was it just readjusting to, you know, doing things without him? Well, obviously it's it's like not having, it's like Mike not having Jermaine next to him, you know, I mean, you build this bond, you build this chemistry for so long. Remember, going back, we were put together, okay? So we didn't really grow up as brothers like that, but we became brothers on the road as well as the studio. It became a marriage, man. Anytime you put together with something, it's it's night and day. It's the same thing with Pimp C and Bun. They, they wasn't together. Like okay, that okay, it's good. It's the same thing. So, so they same. was put together and it became the group, so same thing. So, I mean, we had our differences, you know. Same uh, thing. And, and there was a point where um, we even stopped touring, you know. I got into radio in 2000. And uh, we had just finished up our last album, right? And I said, man, you know, I, I want to go do this radio thing, man. And I invited him out. And he was like, ah, oh, you know, so I'm like, well, what are we going to get paid? And this and that. I'm like, look, man, like, this is a new chapter of our lives. Yeah, we got a name, but we, you know, a coach ain't going to put you in picture if you never pitched before. 
Like mm-hmm. you got the name, but you know what I'm saying? Let's go groom ourselves first and this will help our music later. Mm. Cause now we could play our own shit. Right. I saw the bigger picture, so he decided not to go on the road. So he said, "All right, well, I'm, I'm gonna stick with this, doing this, and you know." So I went and did my radio thing. So I did that for 23 years. Wow. You know, I heard radio. That's hard. I was, with I heard. Yeah, I was well, it was Clear Channel back then, but then yeah, I was on iHeart, and I ended up making it to L.A. I was doing IE L.A. for like five, six years, just in L.A. alone, 102.7 Kiss FM in L.A. Uh-huh. Right after JoJo on the radio, Ryan Seacrest, all of them. You know, first Mexican on fucking radio. That's big out there, Huge. on a major. Well, Huge. excuse me, syndicated pop station, not mm. not because there was other hip hop stations, but on the pop station. pop station. Okay, so I did my radio thing. That's what I wanted to do. But when I, during that time, he was touring, okay? And and, and, and my man just, he couldn't keep it together. You know, I don't want to downplay, you know, who's not here, he can't say his piece. But if you know, you know. But this is this is how it went down, you know? Unfortunately, he had issues going on, you know what I'm saying? And it just kind of affected uh, not only himself, but the group's well-being. Wow. So I would hear stories. Hey, man, y'all coming to tech? No. Nope. I ain't toured in five years. That's that's him. Hey man, you're coming to um the bay? <coughs> no, that's him. And the next Monday, oh man, we saw your boy, man. He wasn't looking too good, man, on stage. And or oh man, he just and I'm hearing all of this, and I'm going. I wanted nothing to do with because him and I, like I said, we would butt heads all the time. So I'm like, I just kind of left it alone. I, I I found a new place something I can call my own, that if this fucks up, that's on me. Yeah. I can't carry, I don't have to, nobody to carry no more. You know, you feel what I'm saying? Because when we were together, I was always trying, I was always having to, you say you was the one with the level head. and right, You know what I'm that. saying? Setting up the shows, going there, making sure we were on time. And, and, and it's like we're doing now. He'll tell you. Mm-hmm. But um, I can't, I can't teach a grown man how to be a, you know. Right. Responsible. Responsible. So I just left it at that. So so when when we came circled back around, the fans wanted it. The fans yeah, really wanted yeah, it. Yeah. They were like, man, please. Like, no disrespect to today's hip hop, but we need that 97. Like, we, we missed that shit from you guys. Wow. So we made a call. I, somehow we got back on the horn together in 2015, and there's where we reunited in Vegas at an Art LeBeau show, man. Wow. You, and, that- and, and that was the best calling because a year later he, he passed, passed away. away. Yeah. That's why I'm everything about to say, happens for a, for a reason. reason. And yeah. so yeah, that was big, and, and that was closure for you as well. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, that was it. Really closure. was. Yeah, that that that's hard. I don't bro. see it. Sometimes we don't see it that way, but man up above does. He, he knows does. what he's doing. That's hard. I, yeah. I like but that. How? Because you know we see these groups that come up over the years, but people don't realize how hard is it to keep a group together and keep them successful and keep them going. Right. Well, you just mentioned, you know, I didn't know that about UGK. Yeah. I mean, third base, same thing. Yeah. They were put together. Mm-hmm. Um, EPMD. I don't know. I think they were brought were they together. they put together? I, I'm not sure on that one, but I know I third know base for had, sure. They, they've had their, their times. Everybody does. But even groups that you've seen where there were brothers, like in R&B and stuff like that, they still have their difficulties well, in at, working right, together and at, stuff right, like that. Right. So. Look at our kids. Look at how they... Yeah. they Big boy want to do this. Andre 3000 want to do a, a, a what, is, what is that new, the flute album, you know, like it's, it's. I think you just get to a point where you outgrow somebody. But I heard a rumor about them that they're coming back to do one last I heard last that too. Album. I would love to see it. I would love see to see how that it. works full circle. <laughs> <laughs> I, you they just did what, Stank <laughs> Omi at uh, Coachella a few years back? Uh, yeah. That yeah. was the greatest thing ever. Yeah, yeah. But uh, let me ask you this, because we about to shut it down, like, what did you think about Daddy Yankee? Didn't he didn't he say he was going Christian and pretty much switched it all I up? I didn't hear anything like that, you Moose. Yeah, 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 you heard about that, yeah, right? Danny's he keeps going in John, yeah, he keeps some Latinos. <laughs> he stopped, uh, and then he's basically becoming a pastor. That's what I was, I heard him wow. do it like in the middle of a crowd. Like it was a huge crowd. He just, something. I'm he done. had an epiphany. Something Thank you, happened. I was about to say that. Yeah, I'm done. <laughs> People get older, man. They just get tired, or they just realize it ain't what everything it cracked up to be, man. This whole business, you know what I'm saying? Um, I, I've lived well. We're going on 35 years, man. Light of shade of brown. I'm still touring. I, I love the fans. I love the music. I love this. Without this, I wouldn't have anything else. None of my assets. I would, you know, I wouldn't. I wouldn't have a podcast. I, you know, I wouldn't. I wouldn't have my home. I wouldn't have, you know, X, Y, and Z. You know what I mean? Um, 
So uh, my uh, successful radio career, you know, or maybe I would have. I, I don't know. But the reason why I got into radio is because of Lottie Shader Brown. Let me ask but you this. I, I really want to go ahead. Quickly. But a lot of people always say, because when we talk to a lot of artists, they always say, I do this for therapy to get a lot of stuff off my chest. So I'm not out yeah. here doing all this crazy stuff. And also I do it because of the love of music. Right. But with entertainment, it comes with a lot of politics. It comes with a lot of other stuff and yeah. not just the music. Yeah. And that's why I feel like a lot of people always lose that love and ended up doing a lot more stuff that they shouldn't be doing or switching be like become a pastor or whatever because it's too much politics it's mm. not the love is just not there for the, the music anymore and i think you know becoming a pastor or you know that, or that's, a great, that's a great lane because shit if you tired of it you just don't if you ain't if it ain't in your heart then why are you doing it but some people switch into country now this country's the new lane now where look at the, after, people say it's after Beyonce switched and she did her country song no. everybody is now everybody jumping already into transfer. whether you low key and don't want to tell nobody you listen to the country and you hear hip hop back you listen to the country my whole family now we go camping my you father in law they all love country they I've always but I'm listening to Morgan like he ain't gonna tell you Morgan Jason, Wallen yeah, like all Jason that Jason Aldean like, all them Darius would you Rucker? ever do a country album you gotta say Darius Rucker if you're black uh, getting that one in there I'm not saying I wouldn't but I'd have to get more familiar with the music with the but music. I, I love they tell stories just like rappers yeah yeah I want to just talk about this before we get you out of here man like uh, your podcast like what's the name of it again yeah. and what's the basis of it yeah thank you for bringing it up um, it's called the blockout podcast the block a lot of people say the blackout because oh, that's okay. what they hear I said no the blockout and then they asked Why? me well, how'd you come up with the name yeah. yeah so when we was recording back in the day we booked studio sessions they'd be like yo oh we got a block, block out, out you know from yeah. 12 to 8 p.m. got it so when I do a block out with you, you're my guest. It's a block out of our time. That's hard. So we got a clock, and it's the block out podcast. And it's not just a podcast. We it's, it's a network. We wanna I don't wanna just do it but anybody can do it, say, you know, you get an iPhone, call yourself a podcast if you're exactly, from somewhere. Exactly, that's right. But we wanna do a network, baby, like, you know, we, we make this channel grow. So Money Moons is on there with me. You know, we got, um, shout out to Danny Boy. He's our producer. Hey, Danny Boy. He's the one who hit the switches. And we go live every Monday. And it's basically hip hop meets, you know, current events meets, you know. That's hard. What my background. I don't want to get into shit I don't know about because that's why I get myself in trouble. You know what I'm saying? Say the wrong thing. Yeah. So, I, you know, we have a female co host. Shout that's out hard. to Crystal um, Perez to you know give the uh, women's perspective that's right you gotta, you have, gotta have that and you know everything i took from radio basically i'm just implementing it into my podcast but realizing it's not so structured as yeah. radio yeah we become robotic at, at points when you're in radio and i learned that to now where some of these guys are going bro just fucking, just have a conversation <laughs> that's all it is you know what i mean that's boss talk so we just talking man that's it boss talk baby. <laughs> The Blockout Podcast every Monday at 8 p.m. And follow us on YouTube, of course, all, all digital platforms. And then also, we've got uh, the new Lighter Shader Brown EP. Talk uh, about yeah. it, dog. Tell about the shit. Let me talk. Okay. <laughs> shit, okay. The new Lighter Shader Brown album coming out this summer. Shit, we've been working on that shit for like a year now. Yeah, bro. We dropped our first single, Sunsets. That shit hit half a million already. Hey. Yeah. On the way to months, the Millie. Yeah. Just a couple months. Yep. And we, you know, we dropped two other singles, Living Life and Funk by Nature. And shit, we just finishing up the album right now we got like two more tracks to do man yeah. it's coming out this summer wow man yeah. congratulations and, and man. i just want to say man I, I, this brother right here he's it's a blessing that he's we've added them a lot of people say you know i oh, have dwt will never be replaced you know you got yeah, these mad yeah, faces yeah. that's okay you're right he won't be replaced yeah i says but the name still lives on and right. that's the and whole i'm sure part. that's what he would want me come to on do. man that's what you gotta so, do so so the music goes on man thank you guys for even doing it. i'm gonna pay close attention Please. i'm glad i got to meet you guys man i appreciate you guys for coming on boss talk 101 what a bosses talk man um top three artists of all time dead or alive um, any top genre top three any genre top any three. genre top three top three dead or alive I'm gonna have to say, man, uh, it's always a struggle between Rock <laughs> and Big Daddy, but. Uh, Top three. Any genre. Rock and Big Cam. Daddy, Big Daddy Kane Cam. just dropped a, a mean 16. I saw day. it. I saw yeah, it. I saw that. Play. Ended it with sipping some wine. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. I'm I'm like, like, you like, we, 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 Love Big Daddy King. Give me a little bit more, dog. I want to see Rock Kim coming with Come on, King. Rock Kim will, man. Give me some, baby. 
Let's go. Rockham, Big Daddy. Oh, you, yo, Rockham is one of your. Yeah, yeah that's, that's what he top. said. He oh, made that's, yeah, yeah, that's hard that. between him and Big Daddy, Ben. So Rockham, Rock Big Daddy, then who yeah, else? Who's man, the third? Uh, you said all genres, though. That's yes, that's all genres. Oh, three. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm just have to keep it hip hop, man. Um, Ice Cube. Hey, oh, that's yeah. Ice Cube. West Coast and Give me Ice Cube story. Hold on. Huh. You, I'm gonna get to you. Huh. Give me an Ice Cube story. Um, we've done. Dozens of shows with him. Never met him in person. <laughs> nah, nah, he doesn't get off the stage and leave. Yeah, he yeah. Right yeah. I heard, right that, by I you heard that that's right. the way he was. I heard that he he's so scheduled out and so you know calculated with what he's doing. Yes, he, he just keeps it moving as he should. Yeah. And yeah. I like it. I like yeah. it as a hustler, man. Yeah, because you're a hustler. You you love it. You hear I love the hustle. Yes, <laughs> yes, absolutely. It's in our blood, it's and we respect it. Yes. That's well, look at you, man. Look at yeah. my subscribers, man. How many views you got? <laughs> <laughs> boss, baby. Boss talks. What a, what a boss set what to what go boss with it. Boss is yeah. talking, man. You taking notes, bro? Say, yeah. everybody yeah. He's sitting in that chair comfortably, <laughs> too. And it's full of snoring. Boy, I heard his ass right now. Whoa, it's full of snoring. Whoa, whoa. I looked over and he's like, whoa. Man, <laughs> that who was that? Set up like this. Knockout. Baby, baby gangster. What's his name? Knockout, baby. What's, what's knockout? BG knockout. BG knockout. Baby yeah. gangster. Uh, he, looked, he did the same thing y'all doing. Looked at the set and was yeah, like, man. what the hell? Well, I like to go to different <laughs> places, you know, and just, just get different vibes, you know. Um, and I we've just, never seen nobody else's set. We've never we've seen nobody we been, did this. We, this all we ever done. Man, like, like, you know? yeah. we've never seen nothing else, and we this all we ever done. We never interviewed. We, you, know you know, with is, nobody, it says, it, you work with what you, you know, how you make it work. That, I, I that's love, what I've seen. I, it, that's man. the way it, it's, it's just a part too. of you. And it's you know? the conversation that matters the most. You hard too. I like it. I'm yeah. gonna watch the show. I want to see yeah. what you got. Come on, you know come on, man. <laughs> man. Let's get that top three. Top three. Yeah, money moves. Let's go, baby. Yeah, I'm '90s. All my favorite. Tupac, Ice Cube, and Nip Hustle, though. Stop I'm playing. Like, yeah. Hard, I'm hard. Like, yeah. Check it, man. Thank Check you guys for coming on the show, man. Thank you, e. We love you, bro. Love How you can too, people man. get a hold of you if they're trying to reach out? Let's get them the IG plugs. Well, like. everything with Lighter Shade is LighterShadeBrown.com. Yeah. Do it individual, like that. Or individuals. Yeah. Uh, mine's at, at Money Moons. Uh, Money Moons. Pretty simple. And at the real ODM. Man, check it, man. Hey, man, listen. It's been another great segment of Boss Talk 101, where the bosses talk, man. Make sure you guys check this next clip out, man. These boys, ODM, Money Moon, just went stupid in here. Check this next clip out. It's coming out right now. 